Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Kristen of the Good Doctors of Abbey Research, and you are very welcome to our YouTube channel and this particular series, which is called Welcome to My World. Abbey Research believes deeply in the idea that curiosity and stories are what change the world because they're just about the only things that ever have. So in service of that, we host this series, which is like a TED Talk in a conversation, where we think that everybody has something in their lives that the rest of us can learn something from. And so I talk to people who are different than me, which is everybody, and we let you guys eavesdrop on what that looks like. And today I am joined by one of my favorite people on the planet, Carrie Sharp. I'm very, very excited for uh, you guys to get to know Carrie. She's a communication consultant, speaker, and co-owner of He Says, She Says. She's also the co-host of Speaking with Ryan and Carrie Sharp, which is a podcast and a delight. Carrie earned her degree in political science and psychology from Lake Superior State University. By the way, Carrie is very passionate about the state of Michigan, so I'm sure we'll get into that. With over 25 years of experience and training, Carrie coaches clients in communication, public speaking skills. She's a Huff Huffington Post contributor, and she's been quoted in a bunch of things, included, including Forbes, Business Insider, and Bustle. She's recently served as communications director for a successful campaign for a candidate for the Michigan House of Representatives. And she and her husband, Ryan, live in northern Michigan and have five children. And if you are a fan of this series, you have already met one of them. Um, Carrie's daughter, Madison Sharp, who is a chef, was on our series earlier on this year. And I'll make sure to link in the show notes because um, she had some really insightful things to say about women in the kitchen. So it was really, really wonderful. Anyway, Carrie, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Oh gosh. So that's an <laughs> incredible, incredible bio. Not surprised. I know I would want to hear, I would love to hear more about exactly what he says, she says does. Yeah. So my husband and I work together, <laughs> which okay. is the, he says, she says. So I think that's pretty unique in and of itself. Most people we come across say I could never work with my spouse, <laughs> but it works really well for us because we each have a different role in the right. business. And so we basically help with communication. I mean, nuts and bolts foundation. That's what we do. Okay. We help people communicate better. Ryan works a lot in the sales side of things because that is his background and expertise. He's so great with relationship building and networking and selling. And so he does that. And I do the public speaking aspect of things and helping people with their messaging or branding and how they look and sound on social media. So it's a lot of professional communication. Uh, rather it than is. like personal communication necessarily. It is. We do sometimes do some corporate training in interpersonal communication skills because that's what goes on in an office. And that's where the problems lie in an office most times. Yeah. But most of what we do deals more with the presentation side of things, how things look, how things sound, how things are perceived and come across. And we have a good time doing it. We actually like each other, so it helps. <laughs> How convenient. Yeah. I know we get it all the time too, where I'm like, well, but it's my best friend and I, and they're like, oh, you're mm -hmm. brave. And I'm like, but it just, I mean, I'm not going to hire every single one of my friends. There are, I, right. there are lots of people I love that I wouldn't work well with together. But if you know who you each are with your eyes open going in, it can be really yeah. healthy and very doable. Yeah. And especially if you are as different as you and Aaron are yeah, and, and Ryan Brian. and I, yep, yep. <laughs> it works well. You each have your roles. You pretty much stick with them. You bounce ideas off of each other and take each other's insight and it works. Yeah. I am. I'm really curious though. When I think about like the nuts and bolts of communication skills, obviously mm -hmm. public speaking has looked a little different in the last year. So as you've had yeah. to work with your clients, there, to me, the, the nuts and bolts of how I speak in Zoom versus how I speak in person doesn't feel super different, but I could be weird. Are they super different? Like, do you have to train people differently? We've been busier in the past year than ever before. Okay. <laughs> part, part of that was because I was involved with that campaign that you mentioned in my bio, but the rest of it was helping people get comfortable with online presentations. And they are different okay. because you're not, be, you're not able to feed off of the crowd the same way online yeah, as you do. Yeah. As you yeah, do in person, when you're in person, I know I've seen you speak to people. You're, you're getting that feedback. Yeah. You're taking in their energy 
and it's different online. So we've done a lot this year training people to take what they do in person and make it work online. We were lucky that we've always used Zoom. I say always. We've used Zoom for five or six years. So it feels like always. It's like the same thing. Like when everyone else was learning Zoom, I was like, guys, the button is in the, it's fine. Right. (laughs) I promise it's not hard. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. And we're, we're more used to it but other people weren't. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were teachers that needed help. There were nurses who came to us for, um, they're teaching like breastfeeding classes and things. And and to bring that online and not have it be boring, it's it's different. That's totally fair. And you're right. I mean, the energy is different. I think I've probably having to do this for so long have subtly trained myself without even thinking it would be my guess. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And, and, but I hate webinars. I hate giving webinars online. I'll say that. <laughs> I'm perfectly content with doing pre-recorded ones, but if like mm-hmm. it's a live thing and I can't see you, it it wigs me out. So I can't. That's hard. Like that. Um, but even like so, I, like I had the privilege of giving a TED talk a little while ago, and the lights were so bright that I may as well have been on Zoom. <laughs> like, <laughs> like there were other people in the room, but like they laughed and their disembodied laughs. Yes. <laughs> Oh, creepy. But I'm really curious because one of the things I love about what you do is that you don't necessarily work with folks like me who have a ton of theater background and who, who, who feel generally comfortable. I love so much that you serve the folks who are scared Um, and you help them understand that there's no real need to be. There's just some skill sets to kind of get there. And I love, I've had the folks, I've had the privilege of watching Carrie work in person with some of these, especially women. And it's been really fascinating to watch that. So as you were working with folks who were terrified of public speaking and Mm -hmm. all of a sudden now have to Zoom speak, what were some of the things you had to work with them on? Well, part of it is not looking nervous, even when you are, because if you think you'll ever get to a point where you're not nervous at all, that's just crazy. I I mean, I'm sure with as much public speaking as you've done, your TED talk still made you nervous with with this. Yeah, right. (laughs) With as much public speaking as I've done, I still get nervous, but making it look like you're not is the goal. And so I have I've worked a lot with people on that. And, like, and their that's bodies, good. like, like yeah. not looking nervous, like understanding how you're standing, like the, even those kind of things, like sit yeah. well, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I said to you in a message that I noticed your shoulders were down mm-hmm. during your talk, which shows that you're not nervous when we're nervous, our shoulders do this, you know, yeah. um, when I was in the middle of childbirth, I remember the nurse telling me, put your shoulders down, drop your shoulders. And she was right because you immediately feel less nervous and you look less nervous, but what your body does, your brain kind of picks up on. If you're smiling, you feel happy. If, if your shoulders are down, you feel less nervous and that's how it looks too. And so we've worked a lot with people on that kind of stuff, both in person and online. There are different things online. If you're constantly messing with your hair or, or you play with your face or things like that, those are things you can control. And there are ways to work on those. It's different for everybody, but we've worked a lot with that in the past year. I can imagine. Yeah. I have to sit on my hands a lot. Mm -hmm. And I have one of my tricks I'll say for not playing with my hair has been that I've started blow drying it and hairspraying it. (laughs) So like, I know this sounds really nuts, but one of the things that, one of the reasons I used to play with it is because it would get in my face. And then a little while ago, um, it occurred to me that I didn't ever do that when I was speaking super professionally where I got my hair done. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, what can I do cool. Mm-hmm. I need to tease it a little bit. I need to put it behind my ear. I need to hairspray it. And then I won't touch it. Um, yeah. and so and like, it's, it's both really intimidating and yeah, I was terrified. I will say though, and I think, and this is one of the things I've heard you say before too. So I want to get into this is that the preparation is key and preparing to show up well. So I was super terrified the first, like the last month before I really landed it. I mean, I had like two months to write, memorize, block, choreograph, everything. It was, it was pretty quick for a Ted talk in terms of a turnaround that, that some other ones I'm applying to ones right now where I won't give it till the middle of October (laughs) and we're (laughs) recording this in May. So I'll have a little bit of your time. Um, Mm -hmm. but by the time I was, it was ready to walk onto that dot, the nervous, isn't the word I would have used. Mm -hmm. It was ready. 
And I know that that is something you work with too, that that balance between the nerves of the, the nerves that come from the weight of what you're about to do Mm -hmm. and the nerves that come from not being prepared. Yeah. And most people think they're prepared when they look over their notes and that's not preparation as you well know. (laughs) Yeah. There's a lot that goes into preparing for a talk, whether it's a Ted talk or something that you're doing around a boardroom. You know, most of the speakers that I work with are business professionals who are just giving presentations uh, every week or every month. And they just need to feel comfortable and feel confident. And that does come down to the preparation, the planning and the practicing you know, you, you feel comfortable with things you've done multiple times. If you have given a speech over and over and over, then it really doesn't feel that differently when you step out onto the red dot or when you stand up at the podium, because you've already said those words, you've already done those moves. You've already gone through all of the material. You're prepared for what you're going to get asked and what your answers will be. So preparation, planning, practicing, all very key. Yeah. And I'm th- as you were saying, I was like, I wonder if it's different for like politics though. Cause like you have prepared stump <laughs> for the candidate you worked with for sure. Yeah. Like some of, and I feel the same way about business owners. Like you have your prepared stuff, but a huge mm-hmm. part of leadership speaking is thinking on your feet. So is it there is. a different way that you help folks prepare, I guess, to, to communicate on their feet rather than being able to look at their notes? Is, is there, is there a method mm-hmm. to that? That's different. But I would never say don't use notes, except in a TED talk, (laughs) where you're (laughs) because that is very, yeah, yeah, it is very memorized and it is very um, more more entertainment actor style. Really, I mean, they call it a performance. So yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. it's exactly what it is. Yes, for politicians and similar people, we work on talking points. So you have specific things that you're going to say in a specific way. And it's always the same stuff. I mean, the client that I just had last year, it it was all the same types of things over and over and over, just said in different ways. So you can prepare talking points, you can work on talking points, and then it's just the delivery of those. Fascinating. So, I mean, I like you, the different ways thing, I think is what comes from knowing your talking points, like in your bones, like you can play it different ways. Like I was really surprised. I've never prepared as intensely for a talk as I did for my TED, obviously. I've never done anything on the level of TED. And I was really surprised at how many different ways I was coached to say the same sentence Mm -hmm. and like learn how it felt different in my mouth. I'm sure that's something that you do with folks too, is have them take it from different directions. Yeah. I always tell people, you need to say these things in your car while you're driving. And you need to say these things in the shower while you're washing your hair, because you don't have the notes in front of you and you are just saying them. And that's when it sounds most natural. The way that it's written on paper is different. And that's why I would never tell someone giving a speech to have it written out as a script, except for a TED talk possibly, but because you're going to get up there and say it in a way that sounds different than you would read it off of paper. And so you have to practice that stuff kind of on the fly uh, or a little bit more spontaneously for things like that. Talking points, you, you need to have them and you need to practice them, but you need to be able to say them in the shower or driving in the car, because that's how you would say them naturally. Yeah. And especially for your clients, which are looking to make a sale of some way, whether the sale is a vote or the sale yeah. is the pitch you're making, like that's especially true. And cause to, you have to be able to stay on brand too. Mm-hmm. Um, improvising does not help with consistency. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It really does not. No. Please just stick to what, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there and, were, I'm sure there's times where you've been, I mean, obviously please never name names, but you're like watching a client. You're like, oh, we did not go over that. Oh, we did not. Yeah. Do that. So, yeah. And usually they pull it out. Okay. Because we've gone through so many other things, but I will always tell a client, if you do not know, please say you do not know mm. because you don't want to bumble through something and regret your answer later. Yeah. It's perfectly okay. And I think we all should get used to saying, you know what? I really don't know. I need to consider that more. I need to think about that and then turn it around and say, what are your thoughts on it and get the other perspective? Because especially for a politician, that's what you need. You need to know what your potential constituents are thinking and feeling. So totally okay to say, I don't know. What are your thoughts? 
Yeah, I mean, my, one of my grad professors taught me that. Like, he actually very, very oh. famously, we have no idea what he ever thought about anything he taught us because we would ask him a yeah. question and he'd sit there and go, what do you think? And we're like, I yeah. asked you. Um, but it was incredibly, <laughs> it was incredibly beneficial. The trust we built with him is, is, is unbelievable. So I want to switch gears really fast because you've been doing this for a long time. And I would love to know what are your favorite parts of your job? Hmm. I think my absolute favorite thing is working with someone who is completely scared and inexperienced and then seeing them give their speech and hearing them say, that was not as hard as I thought, or um, I got great feedback, or if I'm there or when they're doing it, seeing the audience's reaction, because anytime that you give a speech or speak to a crowd, you are making a difference in some way. Someone needs to hear your story or someone needs to hear what you know. They need to hear about your experience and seeing that in the eyes of the audience, seeing it land, that's the best part to me. Oh my gosh. I, that's, as a speaker, that's like the best part. So I can't, yeah. Um, I, that makes complete sense that as a, as a coach, so you're coming off the busiest year you've ever been, you were busy yeah. winning, a, <laughs> winning a race and doing all of these yeah. other things. Do you, as we kind of head back to a hybrid, I mean, I hate the word back, we're heading into something new. So as we go into this new, whatever is next, what do you see for speaking? Are you thinking we're still going to need these online skills or, or kind of, what are you, what are you seeing? We're definitely going to need the online skills. We're, we're seeing more and more of it. Things that were previously in person only are now a lot of times both now in person and online or have permanently switched to online. Some of it's great because if you would normally travel three hours for a meeting that takes 20 minutes and now it's on Zoom, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> but we are seeing things go back into in person. And so that is great too. I mean, I love online. I love the convenience of online. Uh, and there are certain things that I think do best online really, but I mean, there's nothing like in person. There's yeah. nothing like it. And I'm so happy to start seeing it on my calendar and on the calendars of other speakers that I'm working with. Yeah. I have an in-person audition in a couple of weeks, which I, I thought that would be um, in the very far future again. So it was weird to get that email and be like, oh, I'm getting on a plane to do that. <laughs> Got yeah, it. that's awesome. This is, this is, it's like, it's 2019. Okay, no problem. Um, yeah. But I'm wondering to you, because this is something I've been thinking a lot about since Ted. And again, Ted is just a completely separate conversation yes. of public speaking, um, always. Yeah. But when I'm not doing, when I'm not doing Ted, I'm thinking a lot about the conferences I'm going to do, where I've got people in mm -hmm. front but I'm also maybe going to have a live online. Are there different mm -hmm. ways that you would that you would think about coaching somebody who has to both keep the room and keep a camera? Are there different techniques? There are. And I think a lot of that comes down to the materials that you are able to um, give out online oh. that are going to complement what you're doing in person Got it. because you're, you're not going to be able to focus on the camera as much in person like that. You're going to want to focus on your audience and your, your online audience is going to feel that and, and feel a part of that. Okay. So you need to make sure that what you provide them with as far as materials go is, is that's important. You need to make sure they can follow up with you in some way, since they're not going to be able to talk to you face to face. You're going to need to make sure that you have handouts or worksheets that are going to complement what you're doing. And you need to make sure that there is some sort of opt-in, like a freebie or uh, free resources for them so that you can gather their email addresses and connect with them afterwards. You have to make sure that there's enough there for the connection to be built and then continue on. It, it's different online and that's where you're gonna have to make sure that you are upping your game. I love this, that this is, so it's again, preparation to be able to improv. It's mm -hmm. preparation to build a relationship. And yeah. that, you know, if the more you know what you are going in, the more you've got those handouts. And now I'm a, I'm a, I'm kind of anti-PowerPoint these days. Um, oh God, yes. I'm always anti-PowerPoint. You know that. <laughs> I, do. I wanted to no hear your slides. I needed everyone to hear your passion. <laughs> So we are both <laughs> anti-PowerPoint, but not because we don't think that having written information is important. 
it's because people use PowerPoint as a crutch. Yeah. And also just a heads up, it's very, very few people that learning wise can listen and read at the same time. So if you yeah, want like them to zero. Read, they're not listening to you. Yeah. It's like maybe 0.03% of the population. Like it's yeah, not really it's, anybody, no. um, but that doesn't mean not having written things, especially as people learn differently and we have wider yeah. conversations about accessibility. We need to have written things uh, for mm -hmm. people to be able to take and interact with us. That's a great, great point. I love that. And even, even for not hybrid stuff, for entirely online or entirely in person, we need to have written cohesive things a little bit better than a lot of us do, myself included. It's a growth point for us. All of us, yeah. all of us. It's something that takes a lot of planning ahead of time too. So you don't wanna skip that step and you need to make sure that there are ways for them to connect with you afterwards. And you need something to encourage them to do so, which is where the freebie or the opt-in or some sort of free resource comes in because you wanna make sure you've got that connection and the ability to continue to grow it. That, I mean, that's great. Cause really what speaking is, is the either starting point or a furthering of a relationship you already have. And so if you're just yeah. going to show up, say something and then leave and then never build or continue to, to cultivate the relationship, maybe you just told a few jokes, but like it isn't, you yeah. wasted some opportunities there. Big time, big time. That's just as important, if not more so than the talk itself. Absolutely. And that's a great place where we're going to, we're going to end our chat right now, because I can't think of a better note to end people on that. The, the, what you leave them with is as important, if not more so even than what you're saying from, from the stage. So Carrie, thank you so much for joining me and honor as always. Thanks for having me folks. I'll tell you that you want to, if, if speaking is part of your job, i.e. if you are a human person who earns a living, um, then, and it's, and it's not something you feel super comfortable with, Carrie and Ryan are great resources. All of their links are going to be below all the ways to get in touch with them. Their podcast is a gas. So definitely make sure they are warm and wonderful people. Um, and so they, one of, again, like I said, what I, one of the things I love the most is they're serving uh, folks who think this is beyond them. And Carrie and Ryan are really great at showing you that it's not. It's not beyond you at all. Um, so if you loved our conversation, I'd love for you to hit that thumbs up on YouTube. The ma ma magic algorithm really, really needs that thumbs up. If you like the vibe of the conversation in general, I have a lot of them. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Other things that happen here on the Good Doctors YouTube channel are reviews of television shows like The Handmaid's Tale, where we talk about exactly what's happening in Gilead, and also love letters to Hallmark movies and conversations about colonization and what we really need to be doing about it as we move forward as curious humans. Lots and lots to offer, and we'd love to see you on any of the conversations and comments here on the Abbey Research YouTube channel. Again, thanks to my incredible guest, Carrie Sharp, and I will see you all next time on Welcome to My World. Thank you.